Uh, good morning. We are calling construction services from Collin College. And today we're going to go through our proposal for MI Homes. I would like to start by introducing our team members. My name is Sarah Penso, and I am the project estimator along with Diem Williams. Robert Chadwick is our scheduling manager. And our drafting team is composed by Kimberly Rippentrop and Matt Austin. And as we mentioned, uh, Kimberly will not be able to join us today. Uh, first, we're going to go through an overview of the project background, then follow presenting the working drawings, uh, go over the estimate and finish with the proposed schedule for this project. Calling Construction Services was given the opportunity to develop a set of working drawings, estimate and schedule for a two story single family home on slab. We also evaluated the possible substitution of a 40 inch cross base foundation as an alternate. We've created the necessary drawings for this design change, as well as revisions to the original estimate and schedule. Our project site location is at 100 Hedrick Road, Holly Springs, North Carolina. The square footage of the house is 3,655 square feet. We took into consideration for this proposal applicable building codes for the town of Holly Springs Wake County and the state of North Carolina. Because of current times, we were not being able to meet in person. So we used available technology and the cloud to be able to collaborate on the project as a team. Uh, following me is going to be Matt with the working drawings. Thank you, Sarah. The drawings for this house were constructed entirely in Revit. So how we started is given the marketing floor plan, we roughly laid out all of the walls and uh, cabinet tops and appliances and in um, and, and 2D space and dimensioned all of them from stud to stud. The floor plan was then cross-checked with the given construction documents and adjusted the dimensions accordingly. The second floor was then constructed in the same fashion and we aligned all of the exterior walls to the first floor to ensure accuracy. After the first and second floor were completed, uh, the elevations were then modeled in 3D space. All of the details such as the gable pediment and the trim pieces were carefully reconstructed from the given elevation. After this, we began to lay out everything on sheets and work on the detailed drawings. The detailed drawings such as this, uh, such as an, on the optional elevation uh, were all constructed with a, a consulted, uh, we, we consulted a construction man, uh, managers uh, working in the field uh, to go over our details and ensure that they were accurate. So after all of the uh, blueprints were finished, uh, Dion took over with the estimating. Thanks, Matt. So at Colin Construction Services, we understand that a successful project starts with a detailed and accurate estimate. With that said, the overall projected cost of construction for the house is roughly $410,000. This breaks down into roughly 255 thousand in labor and material costs, um, including some turnkey, as well as 155,000 in general expenses. Estimates for the foundation, framing, and roof um, were compiled using local numbers after struggling at first, but finally getting a hold of some contractors who operate in the region. And all other numbers were gathered um, using some general numbers after discovering that there were some similarities in rates. General allowances for the electrical, plumbing, and HVAC, HVAC systems um, were given. However, fixtures um, that may be associated with any of those systems or for the, those systems, we did find detailed um, costs. Um, as for the crawl space option, 
uh, additions and subtractions in material and a little bit in labor were taken into account and we came to the conclusion that the additional cost of construction it was roughly forty two thousand dollars using that cost of construction we then proceeded to determine a sales price of around four hundred and ninety three thousand dollars this set us at a reasonable profit margin of 15 percent um, from there we did add, add on overhead real estate fees and extra material and labor um, based on general conditions that were provided in the instructions, as well as percentages of the uh, material and labor that we got in our uh, estimate. At an overall new cost of roughly $440,000, the net profit then drops to 10.83%. Because these additions were added after we found all of the cost of constructions, we just used that and carried over those rates to maintain the same profit margins. With all of the prices confirmed, we then um, turned to Robert to get our schedule. Thank you, Dion. To create our schedule, we had to get a baseline. And to get a baseline, we had to start with the milestones. We had to figure out what it took to be able to start construction on March the 1st. And so we had to figure out how long it would take or that we need to allot for us to get the permits, how long it'll take to clear and grub, clear and grub the lot, which in this case, it was already done for us, so we didn't have to worry about it. And figure out excavation, foundation, framing, dry in, get all of our milestones figured out. And that way we have a baseline to start with. Then we went to the Holly Springs website and pulled their list of inspections to see what they expect out of it and filled it in in our milestones. Okay, well, this inspection has to be done before that we can complete this milestone. After we have all of our inspections filled in, then we can figure out, okay, what tasks do we need to get to that inspection, to get to that milestone? And so we contacted people in the area and asked them, okay, how long do you think it would take reasonably for you to do this task? And we'd figure out, we put it down. And then we had to, of course, a lot of time for weather delays and any other sort of delays. And so we also had to account for the fact that not every subcontractor provides their own material and we had to provide the material for them and figure out when they have to be there. Because if, if, a, if a subcontractor shows up and they don't have material, they're leaving for the day and you've lost time. You've completely wasted a day and you're lucky to get them back that week. So we had to make sure that our deliveries would show up the day before or even two days before. So that way we had enough time to make sure that it was there for them to start working when they wanted to show up. With all that said, we believe that we can build the house in 135 days, which ends on August the 5th or 6th, sorry. And for the crawl space alternate, we made a whole separate schedule and it'll take seven days longer at 142 days, which is August the 17th. Thank you, Robert. In conclusion, we want to emphasize that Calling Construction Services is committed to providing exceptional customer support from the design concept until delivery. We are confident that we can meet any challenges ahead of us and cooperate with our clients to delivering the project on time, within budget, and according to specifications. We want to thank you all for your time and we are now open for questions. Okay. Um, again, my, my name is Kerry Slattery. Uh, my wife and I have been working as a consultants to NAHB on this uh, on the student competitions since we retired from teaching construction management about six years ago. Just got uh, a couple questions here and the judges when they view your presentations will you know we'll see how you uh, you know how you answered those. So first is um, I think you guys mentioned this some in your presentation, but you know what COVID-19 restrictions has your school been under and how did you organize your teamwork to manage these additional challenges? Yeah, so Colin College, um, for the construction management program, we were um, forced to split our classes and divide the program so we could uh, spread out properly in the classroom. And obviously, face-to-face uh, -face contact was limited. And so as Sarah mentioned, we did use um, the OneDrive that the school provided with our student accounts to make sure we could upload all the files to that. 
Um, obviously, emails every day, just trying to keep updated with everything. Um, we did take advantage of uh, group text chats because that's um, a lot quicker. You know, we're always on our phone. Um, as well as with the teachers, we we're always um, setting up Zoom meetings, especially towards the later end, um, to try to get not help, but just to give them updates to so they could see how it, it was going. Um, and basically, we just did what we did best as um, this generation and used technology to our advantage to make the project work. Okay, good. Um, second question is, uh, sure, you know, some some construction material prices have been very volatile since last spring. Uh, you know, what price fluctuations did you observe and how did they affect your estimate? I can oh, answer okay. that. Okay. So especially with lumber and the demand in the housing market right now, lumber has skyrocketed. And I spent a lot of time calling lumber yards trying to figure out just how much a lumber package is going to cost us. Because while RS means is good and all for similar comparisons, you just can't account for the massive housing market boom that's happened. And so we had to call people. Okay. We had to figure out what the current prices are. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, last thing is, you know, I found that, that when I taught things like estimating and scheduling uh, years ago, you know, one of the greatest challenges, and you guys talked about this, this some in your presentation, but greatest challenges is determining your worker productivity and you know, how long it's going to the man hours can take how long it's going to take to finish the task so go over again you said some earlier but how did you determine the production rates for the primary construction activities you know things like the framing and the roofing i how, can tell you come up with yeah, go. so a lot of it we weren't quite sure exactly how many days it was going to take and that's why as i said in the presentation i had to call people because framing if you're off by a week give or take a week that costs you a lot of time and a lot of money because every day is a lot of money any day that you aren't working towards finishing is a lot of money so we tried to call as many subcontractors as we could and get as many comparable estimates as we could for the amount of time it would take and take all those numbers figure out what our average number was and then put it in So when you called them, they, um, I mean, you just told me you had a two-story house to build or how did they, uh, you know, how did you They wanted to know the square footage. They wanted to know if it was a MEP, which that was just a budget. Yeah. But framing, because it's a more of over a production house, a lot of them have a good feel on about how much it should take. Some of them wanted to see the drawings and then they could get back to me. So after Matt finished, the floor plans, we were able to send it to people to say, okay, this is what we feel comfortable saying that this could be done in this amount of days and just try to do that with everybody. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for your uh, presentation. That's all I have. And uh, we'll see y'all on February the 8th for the debriefing and awards. All right, all right. thank you. Right. Thank have you. a good day. Thank you. Thank you.